we're not a very um, uh, wealthy family, so uh, growing up in the Philippines is like uh, an adventure. <laughs> but um, it was hard growing up. We were living uh, as a squatter on my grandmother's house in their garage when we started uh, living in the city because we have no house, so we have to live in the garage. I actually started working when I was uh, seven years old. I was expected to wake up at six o'clock in the morning so that I can make the rice because I'm the oldest of five. We were expected to go to school full time and at the same time keep our scholarship and at the same time work in the store whenever there's a holiday, um, weekend and free time after school. I was 12 when I started dreaming about living in America and I said I'm gonna go there. So I went to University of Incarnate Word in Texas um, and I applied for scholarship and they granted me one. So it was hard. And my first year, I was like devastated most of the time because half of my time, if I'm not in the library, I'm in the chapel praying that I pass my test <laughs> because I can't afford not to have the scholarship. It was tough though. It was one of those things that I don't want to... Uh, repeat again or even wish it upon another person or my children for that matter so I make sure that Jamalyn and Josh really go to school and really study hard and really apply themselves because I don't want them to go through what I went through you know I wouldn't see my mom a lot because she was working and so sometimes I would wake up and I would just be crying like mom stay home and I'm getting emotional thinking about that but I knew she I knew she was sacrificing a lot for our family but growing up my mom always was an advocate uh, for education especially on me because I was the eldest daughter and so she had very high expectations of me and I remember I would work on book reports and it would be like 3 a.m. in the morning and you know she was working three jobs and it was the, the only time that she could uh, help me with my studies and and she would like push me to to write it again or to read draft something or to create something new and at the time I I was so tired I remember my hand hurt and I was complaining uh, but now I know that she was teaching me hard work ethic and I carried that into my studies uh, within undergrad and graduate school I don't know if you remember this, mom, but you and I, we used to drive around Poway and there was like this one house with like a white picket fence and we would literally just like park in front of this house and look at it. Um, and it makes me emotional because I think it's part of the reason why I ended up buying this house that I live in because um, it actually is very reminiscent of that house. You know, growing up in, um, in low income housing or military housing through my mom's job, it was one of those things we always aspired uh, to to want right i i've always wanted to own a house with a white picket fence and have this vision of providing uh for my family and so that pressure i think came naturally and i knew that through education i would be able to hopefully get a well-paying job um, and be able to afford a lot of the things that we weren't able to afford growing up when jamalin bought the house and she showed it to me I was like crying a lot. <laughs> I said, oh my God, my daughter made it. No, I, I, I did. I think I did it. I made it. I made it through my daughter. And, and she did fulfill my dream.